Hello, my name is Jamie Pollock. I mix front of house for Depeche Mode. Tell us about who you have been working with before Depeche Mode. Uh, touring wise, uh, last year was Halsey, Nine Inch Nails, and Till Lunderman. Uh, I do a lot of special event uh, broadcast mixing as well, and uh, Radiohead in the past, Peter Gabriel in the past, but um, I don't tour so often. Mainly do uh, you know broadcast and some tour. And how's the tour with the pitch been going so far? It's great. Everything, uh, you know, it's a, a band like this. I think uh, whatever you think you know, uh, when you actually get the step behind the console, it opens up, uh, you know, all these other doors that you never really thought existed. And, you know, and, and the, the material that they have is, uh, you know, just, um, you know, it, it's never ending. You know, some of the, the sounds and uh, what's, what's beneath the songs a little bit as well. So how was the process with the pre-production? process was good. We started at the studio uh, in January and was able to spend a good amount of time, uh, I think, getting sounds and especially with the new record. I think uh, it was important to them how to translate that into a live environment. Um, so uh, we spent a lot of time, uh, you know, on that. And then I think that's when, you know, I realized their whole catalog and, you know, how much stuff is actually there that uh, which is pretty incredible for a band like this. Cool. You have a lot of outboard gear. Isn't that kind of outdated and old school? Never. <laughs> uh, no, it's it's. I think for uh, someone like me, you know, I grew up with this stuff. Uh, uh, it's a tactical type of thing as well. Um, plus, there's iron in there. You know, uh, plugins sound great, and I use a lot of plugins. Uh, uh, but there is a, um, you know, a, a, I think to me. Uh, there's a there's a little something extra that this kind of brings and plus it gives me a quick way to put my hand on a vocal and maybe in a softer song adjust the low end a little bit different um so it's it's uh it, it makes it fast for me to be able to access things and uh you know and, and basically everything hits some piece of uh, you know everything that's coming to the desk hits some t some type of analog at some point in the chain so Will you uh, walk us through your rig here so we can see some of the outboard stuff? Yeah, sure. Um, so th this is basically my, uh, my, my left-right chain, which is uh, a Chandler curve bender going into a uh, multi-band tube tech. Um, it's quite nice. I could control the, the low end of the vent. Like sometimes with the, with the base of the venue every day, I could, I could uh, you know, really t sculpt the low end and sculpt the high end. Don't really touch the mid mid too much, but uh, with, with with PA's in different rooms, it, it definitely gives me a little bit of uh, control. Um, so, what are you using the tube tech for? It's on my left right bus. Okay. Yeah. So, this, so this is my left right bus. Wow. So it's an EQ into a multi band, yeah. and then that's going into a Neve MBC uh, master converter uh, with a limiter and some. Uh, basically, it has a, a, a transformer with uh, a limiter, basically. Uh, so that's my left right chain yeah. uh this is uh dave vocal and marty vocal uh which is two shelford channels uh which is like it just gives me a quick way of maybe tailoring his eq per song um and there's also a 5045 uh primary source enhancer which is just basically uh giving me a little bit of extra uh game before feedback when they walk out to the thrust yeah. uh so it comes in quite handy um Next up, I have a, I guess a GML 8900. Uh, no other piece really does that. Uh, it's a uh, dynamic range controller, which uh, lets you really uh, dynamically control something. So I actually use this on the guitars. It really just makes the guitars sit right in the pocket. And uh, no matter what type of level comes into it, it always sits exactly where I want it. And it sounds really natural, which is the, uh, the brilliant of, of, uh, bit about that piece. Um, then, you know, we have some Maddie stuff. We get some Maddie sources from the stage, uh, which is the RME Maddie router, which is distributing between the two desks, uh, master clock. Uh, this is used for playback and some, uh, two track recording. Um, then we have, uh, a Neve, uh, master bus processor, which is really just, I'm using mainly the width control. Uh, it kind of gives some spread. On, um, on some of the drum loops and the sequences that are happening and some of the very like uh, just big wide, it just makes it really big and wide and uh, quite nice. And uh, just to touch a little bit of compression, um, the TG-1 is a 
a really nice type of limiter. This is really just getting uh, smashed. And what I, what I have is I have uh, a, almost like a set of room mics on the drum kit. And um, it gives me like almost like a, a, a type of a room sound that I can kind of sneak into some of the, uh, on some of the songs that kind of want to hit a little bit harder. And uh, it's a quite nice touch just to kind of give you that extra little uh, moment when, when you want to take it. But uh, only used occasionally, but when, when, you, when it's used right, it's, it's, it's quite nice. Um, API 2500, uh, you know, on my drum bus, just classic, uh, you know, just one of those things that I've always used and I could have a, a rack of those and it would, it would work on everything. Um, but yeah, almost always like to have one of those in the rack. Uh, this is a spare NBC because it's, it's just such a, an important thing in my chain. Uh, the UBK is a, uh, is a Fatso with a couple modifications. Um, this is on my, on my drum electronics. Kind of just gives them a little more warmth. Um, Obsidian is a uh, SSL uh, VCA compressor. Uh, I have this on synths. Uh, the image, what I like about this is it has a really big wide image um, and just kind of does what, what, a, what, a, what an SSL bus compressor would, would do. Um, but I think the, uh, the width is good. It also has a really nice uh, lo-fi mode, which I sometimes go into, which will actually uh, give you a little bit of distortion, which is actually quite different. Um, some, uh, some preamps are for, uh, basically just for my audience mics. Since, since, since I don't use the local IO, uh, these all land into that Prodigy. So uh, just some preamps uh, uh, for the audience stuff. Uh, the Evitide Eclipse is, was originally a backup to the 3000 because the 3000 is quite an old piece and it's, this is the one thing that will give me some trouble on a daily basis. Uh, what I use here is the classic uh, harmonizer preset, uh, kind of custom tailored a little bit, but um, you know the, the converters in here just sound the way they sound and uh, it does what it does, you know, and, and, uh, and now the Eclipse has turned more to a specialty box where I'm using on, you know, on a, on a couple songs where I have these really, you know, wild effects and there's a, a lot of effects with uh, this band. Uh, this, this has come in handy to kind of, kind of sculpt some of those, uh, those, those special moments. Um, so that's with that. The Bacacity is uh, a reverb that I'm using uh, with the 6000. Uh, the TC stuff I really love. Uh, have always used a 6000 in the studio on, on my post stuff. Um, I've always had one on the road. It, it becomes one of those, like, uh, to me, a, a utility piece because sometimes I never know what I'm going to put stuff on. Uh, right now I'm using uh, the VSS4 presets uh, for Dave and Marty Vocal, or maybe the Dave and uh, one for Dave and one for uh, almost like a, a global background vocal. But I use this in combination with the M7. Like everything I'm doing is a lot of combination of, of things. So like there's always a combination of reverbs. There's always sometimes a combination of harmonizers. Uh, I use a lot of combination of delays. So it's never just one reverb that you're kind of hearing. It's always a blend of a couple different things. So uh, I have quite a short time here and I'm using the bigger, uh, more like, uh, you know, the, 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 the meat of the, of the reverb I would say is the TC and uh, the procrastity is just that little bit of extra you know, uh, depth, as I would call it. Um, and then this is uh, for press, kind of boring. Uh, just gives us some extra outputs uh, when we have press. And then uh, the L Acoustics uh, uh, amp and the P1 is for my uh, near field system. So I have a, a SB18 sub, a pair of X8s, and uh, we use uh, K1. Uh, we have a K1 uh, PA with a, a flown KS28 and a ground KS28 as well. And we should uh, mention the uh, centerpiece you oh, have here. And, and the, uh, the TC Clarity M as well, um, which is quite nice uh, for me. Um, you know, as a, as a front of house picture, you're, you're kind of doing multiple mixes at one time. Uh, so what I do with this is uh, my, I monitor the TC off of my Neve MBC. And what I do is this is my this is my left right bus. The left right bus goes everywhere. That's the broadcast mix. That's the press mix. That's the mix for the PA. So what I want to really do is ensure that I have a, you know, with, with broadcast, I want to write the right broadcast level. So I'm looking at luffs. I'm looking at my true peak. I'm looking at uh, my radar, you know, so I, I could see my, 
you know, my scope of time and, and how things are hitting. So it becomes a, a, a great visual tool for me to kind of look at quickly. And, and as far as the ballistics go, I know if I'm actually peaking anything or if I have true peaks, I'll get an indication. Um, you know, I, I'll use the phase sometimes. Uh, I like the RTA going, just quickly go to the RTA sometimes just to see the, the roll off of, of uh, you know, if I'm hearing something rather than me, depending on what, what's going on, it might be a faster way for me to, for, to visualize something, so. Uh, can I just go back to um, yeah. the reverb thing about using multiple um, reverbs at the same time? Yep. Is that um, a specialty for you or is that common uh, amongst uh, I don't, front of house I don't guys? Really, I don't really know. Uh, I, you know, I it's something that I always sometimes do. I, I don't always do it. Uh, I think, um, you know, listening, listening to some of the sounds, you know, like I never quite... I never wanted to be exactly like the record, but you know, like you try to hear the, you know, you hear all the, you know, you have, sometimes you have all these different combination of things happening. And, and uh, to me, I could, I could play with it, you know? So I like, like a lot of times I'll leave one reverb and I'll swell another reverb. And, you know, I think it's probably a common thing that people are doing. Uh, but for me, it, it just, it gives me ways of playing with the sound. Um, so. So, I mean, on a, a vocal bus or a channel for, for, for Dave, for instance, would you then blend a short and a long yeah. together yeah. or how does yeah. it work? Yeah, I kind of have a short, like Bricassian and a longer on, on, the, on the TC. Yeah. And, and the TC has the character to it, I think. You know, like I get most of the character off of the TC yeah. and the Bricassian just gives the, the depth to, to it. So uh, I, quite a bit with Dave's vocal, I'll, I'll have, uh, I'll, I'll play with the TC a little bit. So if he's holding a big note, I'll, you know, I'll crank the send and I'll be, you know, it will bring out some of those artifacts where at the same time I'm keeping, you know, the precacity is, is the depth that, that's happening and then overall sound. So kind of a dub approach, <laughs> you could say. Maybe, yeah, maybe, you know, yeah. I, sometimes I don't really, uh, I've always been one to kind of use my ears and what sounds right. And, yeah. you know, uh, I've never used so many effects with this, with this band. So, uh, you know, it's it's everything that I'm doing is is really uh, with with this run so far is really just combinations of things have have been working for me. So. And we actually brought your Hall of Fame uh, guitar pedal to. I know. I want to give it a try. I know. So so, so what are you gonna use that for? Not sure yet. I need. You know, someone told me it was very. I told you I like to kind of play with the reverbs. You know, especially with certain notes and certain things. So, you know, it would be a way for me to give maybe a specialty type of sound. Maybe maybe. Uh, I like uh, I like having moments for things, you know. Like I like I, I don't want to have, you know. I want to be able to pick and choose, and you know, ha have things you know change over over the over the set, you know. Not just have one generic reverb or one generic this. So I'm hoping maybe uh, a way of me being able to maybe give a special moment, you know, somewhere. So interesting. Thanks a lot for taking time to this. No problem. Yeah.